In this first part, I'll explain to you how I made my potter's wheel and why I used the parts I did. So the first part you need to find is a suitable motor. It can't be too fast or too slow and needs to be powerful enough. I first tried using a ceiling fan motor, but it just didn't have enough power. After a lot of looking around, I came across these handheld paint and cement mixers. You can buy them in different powers and I bought mine in a one horsepower version. One of the main benefits of this motor, besides its power, is that it has a variable speed switch. So one of the first things I did was to open it up and extend the wires leading to the switch. After that, I put it back together and cut off the excess handle so it would fit better on the frame. One of the downsides to this motor is that it's very loud, so after attaching it to the frame, I built a box around it and insulated the inside. Even though the motor has a built-in fan, I was a bit worried that it might overheat, and so I put some holes in the bottom of the box to let the air pass through. As I mentioned in the previous video, I used pushchair wheels to connect the motor to the wheel head. Another benefit of the motor I used is that it has a threaded connector, so I was able to bolt the first wheel straight on. The first wheel drives the second wheel using a bicycle inner tube, which I cut to the right length and stapled together. The second wheel is suspended on a steel threaded rod between two bearings, which is essential to get the wheel to turn straight and smoothly. The steel rod then passes through the plastic box and attaches to the wheel head. I used a bamboo chopping board as my wheel head and so I needed to create a support underneath rather than simply bolting it on because when I tried that there was too much give from side to side no matter how tight the nuts were. To make the support I used some wooden drain pipe. The black tape you can see was used to help me get the wheel head turning flatter. Because the first board is bolted on I needed to attach a second board to cover the nut. I did this by routing out a space and making locator pins out of dowel. Getting the wheel head to turn level was the most challenging part of the build. Although you'll notice the board isn't central, it is fairly level, at least level enough for me to make small to medium pots on. The next step was to make a foot pedal using the speed switch I had extended earlier. I attached the switch using some plastic cogs of different sizes to get the right amount of movement for the speed range I needed. The foot pedal plugs into the main frame using an audio phono connector and finally the main power supply is controlled by a switch. Thanks for watching and click on the link for part 3 to see me actually making a pot on the wheel.